<laughs> yes, we were, because it all comes down, we can talk enrollment and families and whatnot, but it all comes down to funding per student. Well, and, and the demographic shift. And, uh, you know, uh, this is a dangerous subject to me to wade into. <laughs> to, to say I've disagreed with our educational establishment uh, is an understatement. You know, I'm of that old-fashioned view, kids should actually come first, not the teachers' union. Uh, not political agendas. It should be what's best for the kids. So, as I say, that opens up a can of worms. I'm a bit surprised, though, that they're having a look at this trend now. It's been going on for, you know, arguably 12 years. Uh, the demographic shift, you're absolutely right, Jill, is underlying the trend. And it should have had way more policy implications than it has at this point. But because of the politicization of, the, of uh, education, it hasn't translated into action at this point. And then individuals, anybody listening today, should ask themselves, do they think that the excessive politicization of education has actually helped their children? Because I don't see it for one iota, whether it's them being held hostage last year in yet another BCTF dispute. And uh, the context of that was the BCTF um, contract demands were so outrageous, were so not even possible remotely in this planet to be met, like asking for more paid days off than there were teaching days. Yeah, that's going to get met for sure. What, you don't think that you should get six months paid leave when your cat gets sick? That's what I mean, yeah. I mean, it just went on and on, and, and the debate. But the debate about school closures has been dishonest. I mean, I remember, uh, it's going back maybe a couple of years, but McBride Annex was uh, suggested to be closed, and it had 43% capacity. McDonald Elementary at the time had about 32% capacity. We need more mature discussions about this. And as I say, anyone who doesn't think there has been also a migration into independent schools because of these constant disruptions and the BC to, uh, BCTS politicization of the system, uh, it's just deluding themselves, absolutely deluding themselves. You, the waiting list on independent schools is unbelievable. You know, it's just huge. You just can't just snap your fingers and say, I'm going to an independent school today. And that migration has also taken place inside of Vancouver. So there's a lot of issues at play here, and the, uh, one of the economic sides to this, um, besides we better have a look at our broad-based social policy, uh, that you are having an aging population, and yet we have this mantra of more money for health care, more money for education, no matter how far that, I mean, keep in mind, there's probably about 60,000 fewer students in the public school system right now than there was at the beginning of the last decade. I mean, that's, you know, and let's say every school is 500, uh, 500 student size. Well, that's a hell of a lot of schools that are being underutilized. And uh, as I say, I, what drives me crazy is that it's not a mature debate. It's a politicized debate for agendas that are certainly other than what's best for kids here. We, we need far more flexibility. Uh, let me just give you one quick quote here. Richard Warzel is my favorite uh, so-called futurist in the country, and he sums it up, he's saying, with this. The problem is that education and the means by which we deliver it is the single social structure most resistant to change at a time when change is happening faster than at any other time in human history. And that translates in another way. Uh, I, I'm going to got a comment ready to go for Monday or Tuesday that says, here we go graduating another set of students who are economically and financially illiterate, period. And I want to know how that benefits them, how that benefits society. But that, that is, I think, you would have a real tough time debating that one. And add to that, we've got these students who are, re I can't even imagine or, or describe, rather, how ill-prepared they are for the job market. And even, but I'm saying even conceptually, like what would a job really look like? What are expectations of you? What skill sets are being rewarded right now? I mean, the list just goes on. I, I, I'm just in that camp that says that resistance to change has done a profound disservice to our students. And so are you talking though specifically school curriculum or school equipment? Case, it would be, well, again, uh, we've allowed the school system to be run by the BCTF. The BCTF is profoundly anti-business, anti-economic, uh, common sense at least, anti-finance. And uh, this is translated into the curriculum and to attitudes about it. I see there's far more levels of indoctrination going on than education, and, and you know, in certain areas. And man, I, I just say this is a disservice. And, and I understand that well, you can't just sit here and say, oh, this should be added to the curriculum, because you've got to say, well, what would you remove? 
I cannot believe that this couldn't be integrated. I think there's a false debate out there right now that sort of says, are we educating kind of the whole student, the whole citizen? and not preparing them for the job market. They are not mutually exclusive. I mean, that, that's nonsense. And uh, I'm just worried because one of the biggest social problems, the biggest problems about inequality, you want to enhance inequality, keep doing what we're doing. And the same people who pay lip service to caring about equality, inequality have not had a new idea in this area in decades. But this is how you entrench inequality. This is how you create youth unemployment. This is how you create uh, you know, a generation that's ill-prepared for the changes that have already taken place. And we're not having that discussion. Uh, are there places you... How many days off the BCTF gets for paid uh, bereavement leave? Uh, do you see places where they are having that discussion, though, or where they have uh, made changes or improved Well, you know it? what's very interesting is education is a much more... If, if you judge it by uh, what's in the media, for example, education is a much more prominent debate in the States far more prominent. I mean, gosh, it's, it's, you can't get a, a, a week that goes by in a major publication that they're not at least discussing it. And that's my thing is I'm not suggesting uh, that I'm sitting here with any answers. I'm suggesting we're not having the discussion. I know there's uh, discussions right now about the curriculum going on in Victoria. This isn't on the agenda, period. I know somebody involved. It's not on the agenda. And uh, I just keep going, wow. And I, I guess I'm trying to say, why don't we get real and admit it? We are graduating yet another group that is financially, economically, personal finance, uh, career-wise, uh, illiterate. And I just don't see someone should get on, you know, the chairman of the school board. I don't care, the BCDF, and to explain to us how that benefited the students. And they can't. It would be a good explanation uh, to get. Uh, now... <laughs>